Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From the missing princes in the tower to fleets of UFOs, here are nine historical mysteries that will probably never be solved. Number 9. The Princes in the Tower In 1483, the English King Edward IV died unexpectedly, leaving his 12-year-old son Edward next in line to the throne. The boy and his younger brother were promptly escorted to London by his uncle Richard, Duke of Gloucester, and taken to the Tower of London, which was, at the time, a luxurious royal residence where monarchs would traditionally spend the night before their coronation. This was the last anyone would see of the two boys because they mysteriously vanished from behind the tower's walls. Richard went on to become Richard III, although his reign was cut short by Henry Tudor, who was crowned as Henry VII. What happened to the boys remained a mystery for almost 200 years, but in 1674, workmen found two small skeletons buried beneath one of the staircases in the tower. Were they the princes? But who had ordered their murders? The obvious suspect was Richard, who benefited massively from their disappearance, but many believe he would have proudly displayed their bodies as conclusive proof of their death to prevent anyone coming forward and trying to claim the throne from him later on. Makes sense, right? Perhaps then, it was Henry VII who had them killed. After taking the throne from Richard, he battled to establish his legitimacy and was obsessed with the importance of the succession. He would have done everything possible to ensure there weren't any other rightful heirs to the throne, so could have taken definitive steps to end Edward IV's bloodline. The true motives behind the murder of the princes in the tower were never uncovered and likely will never be fully understood. After all, this all happened more than 500 years ago, and any evidence has long since vanished. Number 8. The Ark of the Covenant According to the Hebrew Bible, when the Ark of the Covenant was first built, it held the tablets that were engraved with the Ten Commandments and was kept at the Temple of Solomon. According to legend, an army led by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar II conquered Jerusalem in the 6th century BC and destroyed the temple. Since then, the true whereabouts of the Ark remain unknown. There are a number of theories about its final resting place, of course, including suggestions that it was moved by the Knights Templar and taken to Oak Island in Nova Scotia. It might be hidden in a room in the Cathedral of Our Lady of Chartres in France, perhaps it's in an unmarked cave in Jordan, or it might be held by the Lemba tribe in South Africa. One of the suggestions that's taken on most traction is that the Ark was taken to Ethiopia and placed inside the Church of Our Lady of Zion in the town of Aksum. Reports surfaced from the Second World War by an army who allegedly saw the Ark at that time. But recently these reports have been dismissed, because it's quite common in Ethiopia to see replicas of the Ark in churches. This leaves the question of where the true Ark is now, whether it survived the destruction of Solomon's temple, or even if it truly existed in the first place. Number 7. The Sibiu Manuscript Discovered in 1961, the 450-page Sibiu manuscript dates from between 1550 and 1570 and contains a series of drawings and technical information that was well ahead of its time. It's thought to have been written by Konrad Haas, a military engineer who worked for the Kingdom of Hungary, and describes in detail his plans for three-stage rockets, manned rocket flights, liquid fuel, and various ideas for ballistics and artillery. It's the first known time that someone thought of the idea of multi-stage rockets, and it's not entirely clear whether this was just a theoretical paper or whether any of the designs were put into practice. There are some suggestions that a rocket launch was carried out in Sibiu in 1550, but there's no direct evidence to support this. For now, the Sibiu manuscript remains a mystery. In particular, how was Haas able to develop these ideas so many centuries before technology caught up with them and was able to put them into practice? Perhaps these weapons were used far earlier than previously thought, but the lack of evidence for this only deepens the mystery, and we may never know the full truth. And now for number 6. But first, if you are new here, welcome! And be sure to subscribe and let us know your theories to these mysteries in the comments below. Number 6. Hanging Gardens of Babylon Said to have been built by King Nebuchadnezzar II, same one from the Temple of Solomon, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon were one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It was a structure made up of tiered gardens containing plants from across the Babylonian Empire and was possibly built for the king's wife to remind her of the lush countryside when they were in the city. There's a problem with the story of the Hanging Gardens, though. It's the only one of the ancient Seven Wonders where the exact location is yet to be determined, and there are some that believe the Hanging Gardens never even existed at all. 
Many texts that mention the gardens are thought to have been written by people who never visited Babylon, so finding first-hand witnesses has proved to be impossible. Was it merely a legend designed by the Babylonians to show others how advanced they were? Or were the gardens actually located in another city, perhaps Nineveh, which would explain why no evidence has been found at Babylon? The search for the site of this amazing paradise told throughout history continues. Number 5. The San Bernardo Mummies When you think of mummies, your first thoughts probably go to the ones that are found in the tombs of ancient Egypt, but the mummification process happens around the world, sometimes without any human involvement at all. One of the greatest mummy mysteries comes from Colombia in the town of San Bernardo. It first came to light in 1957, when following a flood, workers began to relocate a cemetery. As the bodies were removed, it became clear that they hadn't undergone the decomposition you'd normally expect, and many of them appeared to be completely fresh despite having been underground for a number of years. To make things more mysterious, this strange phenomenon wasn't present in everybody that was dug up, which means it wasn't necessarily to do with the local climate or something in the soil. Some have suggested it could be related to the unusual diet of many locals, while others are convinced there's a spiritual or paranormal cause. The mummies have become somewhat of a tourist attraction for San Bernardo, and you can see them in the nearby museum. The cause is still far from being explained, though, and might never be fully understood. Number 4. The Shroud of Turin The Shroud of Turin, which is on display at the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist in Turin, Italy, is said to be the cloth in which Jesus was buried. But there's a great deal of mystery around the artifact, and debate as to its true origins. It's about 15 feet long and 4 feet wide, and bears the imprint of what looks like the body of a crucified man. The problem is that tests have been carried out that date the cloth to around the 13th or 14th centuries. How the image is imprinted is hard to say. It wasn't painted on with brush strokes, and the image definitely contains blood, even though it only exists on the surface and has not penetrated the deeper fibers. Testing has therefore proved inconclusive, which means that the shroud could well be what Jesus was buried in, and it could just as likely be an elaborate fake. It's something that we'll likely never know for sure, and it's probably a matter of faith as to whether you believe it is what it's claimed to be or not. Number 3. The Copper Scroll Treasure The Dead Sea Scrolls are a collection of writings that were found in caves at Qumran, and while they are all mysterious in their own ways, there's one that stands out, the Copper Scroll. The others were all found by Bedouins and written on parchment, but this was the final scroll to be discovered and was unearthed by an archaeologist and written on metal. It had to be cut into strips and reassembled, and was found to be written in a slightly different version of Hebrew than all the others. Perhaps most interestingly, though, is that the scroll contains a list of 64 locations where the treasure could be found. In total, there's mention of more than 4,600 pieces of gold, silver, and other valuable items, which would be worth somewhere in the billions if it was to ever be found. Thought to be the hidden valuables from the first or second temple, the race is now on to find the sites mentioned. It's just not as easy as simply following a map. The directions to each location rely on the reader knowing where to start, so it's kind of impossible to follow without other information. It's therefore not clear if the Copper Scroll truly does lead to a vast trove of treasure, if the loot has already been recovered, or if it's all made up. Having been written at some point in the first century, the terrain now looks very different, so this is one treasure quest that is quite the challenge. Number 2. The Helix Staircase of Loreto Chapel in 1873, the Bishop of the Santa Fe Archdiocese commissioned a chapel called Our Lady of Light, which would be maintained by a religious order called the Sisters of Loreto. The chapel was designed by the famed French architect Antoine Mouly, but he died before its completion. When the chapel was completed, there was a noticeable absence. There was no staircase to the choir loft. While other chapels often used ladders, this was unacceptable to the nuns, and Moly most probably had a solution, but was no longer around to share it. Soon after, so the story goes, the order began to pray to the patron saint of carpenters, St. Joseph, for assistance. On the ninth day of praying, a man arrived at the door with a mule and some tools, and told them, to their surprise, that he was a carpenter. They invited him in, and he agreed to solve their problem, as long as they left him uninterrupted while he carried out the work. After a few weeks, he was finished and vanished. No one knew who he was, he hadn't even given his name, but the most mysterious thing about the story is the staircase he had built. There is no central column or support beams, he didn't use any nails or glue, and the wood used was not indigenous to the Santa Fe area. To this day, the construction of the staircase remains a mystery. 
Were the nuns visited by St. Joseph, the spirit of the architect who wanted to finish his design, or is there a more down-to-earth solution? Number 1. Kenneth Arnold's Flying Saucers When you hear about a UFO sighting, you might think of a flying saucer, but this term was only coined by the press in 1947 after a sighting by pilot Kenneth Arnold as he flew over Mount Rainier, Washington. He described seeing nine glittering craft each of which was pie-plated, tailless with a triangular rear section, and traveling at more than 1,200 miles per hour. Previously to this, sightings of objects in the sky were usually explained as enemy aircraft, but from this moment onwards began a flurry of UFO sightings around the world. The difference, though, is that while most descriptions of flying saucers depicted disc or saucer-shaped objects, the things that Arnold saw and where the term comes from were more tadpole-shaped. To this day, it's unclear exactly what he saw that night. Was it a new weapon being tested by the American or Soviet military in the early years of the Cold War? Or was it a fleet of alien spacecraft? We'll never know for sure, but whatever it was, undoubtedly influenced people's perceptions of unidentified objects in the sky for many years to come. Thanks for watching! Of course, there are plenty more historical mysteries, so let me know if you'd like a part two. Be sure to subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon. Bye!